in sports cream. Story, 10 rounds in the junior lightweight division. Grove, a wily veteran, liberatory, 27 years of age. Dave Bontempo takes a look at the two men fighting in tonight's main event. Opponents of Fred Liberatore see him like this. He's in their face. The style has brought in two 1994 victories and a five-fight win streak dating back to early 1993. Bombs like this one against Mark Smith have paved the way. Liberatore's biggest triumph was his last. This grueling effort against Harold Warren put him into the top ten for the first time. The 27-year-old Bayside, New York, junior lightweight stood and slugged. The exchanges forced him to take quite a few shots, but Liberatore hates to give away the inside. Liberatore believes he must work to get inside against Calvin Grove. In order to do that, he may have to hunt him down, but he has seen it all. So I always had the confidence that I can stand in there and, uh, you know, fight with anybody. Um, but, you know, I guess it's just, a, you know, just another notch up, you know, on my confidence level. Um, I feel, uh, you know, I, I've been in with the best. I feel like I fought boxes, bangers, um, and, uh, and it all winds up to be the same thing. They're either going to hit you to the left or the right. Calvin Grove has been a virtual roadmap. Besides the United States, he has fought in places like France, Russia, Australia, and Mexico. Yet he was in the good old USA when he went up against Pete Taliaferro. Grove, a one-time IBF featherweight champion, displayed vintage movement and precision. It seemed like he could do no wrong, and this became his fourth straight win. The streak is now five. The fight that got him going was this masterpiece against Troy Dorsey. Grove picked Dorsey apart with his hand speed and had such a big lead that a late Dorsey knockdown had no impact. His opponent tonight, Fred Liberatore, has the same style as Dorsey. That sets up well for Grove, who is built to last. Because, you know, the box is still around because, uh, you know, us guys don't be getting hit. You know what I mean? A lot of guys try to, you know, fight for TV and, you know, and uh, they get all busted up and uh, these guys don't be lasting. So I guess, you know, we don't get hit, so uh, we last a little longer. Those are the principals in our main event, Calvin Grove and Fred Liberatore. This is scheduled for 10 rounds in the junior lightweight division. And here comes Fred Liberatore. He's 27 years of age, currently ranked number six by the IBF. Trying to parlay his last victory, another big fight. He had the victory over Harold Warren. He's in the ratings now. Tonight, he goes against the former champion to see if he can go one notch higher. And he's coming off that big win against Harold Warren on July 8th in Biloxi, a 10-round decision. 11 of his 19 wins have been knockouts, although he's a slow starter, he's only had one first-round knockout. That win sort of transformed him, not just from somebody who likes to come forward, but somebody who can perform in clutch situations. Well, Fred Libertori did defeat, back in 1990, Frank Toledo, who we just saw win here on ESPN. And here comes Calvin Grove. He last fought on May 7th. He is ranked number two by the IBF, number eight by the WBC, second by the WBC. And his last fight on May 7th, an eight-round decision over Angel Aldama. And here are the AutoZone keys to victory. Well, here's how they stack up. It will be the matador in the bill. Fred Libertori wants to pound the body. He wants to cut off the ring and be the bull in this fight. Grove, the matador, wants to land the jab consistently, utilize the ring, and make Libertori use a lot of effort to track him down. There are the principals. Now, for the introductions, here's our ring announcer, Ed Darian. From the resort, from the Fernwood Resort and Country Club, here in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, Top Rank Incorporated and Budweiser, the King of Beers, in association with Fisticuff Productions, proudly present Top Rank Boxing's main event. It's approved by the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission. The Honorable Chuck Bednarik, Commissioner. The Honorable Howard E. McCall, Chairman. Greg Serb, Executive Director. 
the physicians in attendance to ringside this evening, Dr. Frank Romoscovich and Dr. Walter Newman. Our timekeeper to bell is Bill Reese. The judges, Richard Strange, Jack Castellani, and Bill Flasser. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10-round junior lightweight belt, referee John Carroll. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing a white trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at an even 132 pounds. This young man is from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. He has 46 wins, five losses, with 17 big knockouts. The former IBF and USBA world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Calvin Silky Smooth Grove. Grove. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the purple trunks with the white and black trim. He weighed in at 129 and three quarter pounds. From Bayside, Queens, New York, he has 19 wins, three losses, one draw, with 11 big knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Freddy, the Pitbull Liberatore. Liberatore. Calvin Grove back to his corner. He says that Liberatore has the perfect style for him. He'll come right at him, and Grove feels he'll be able to pick him apart. Liberatore says that Grove has experienced. He loved him as a fighter when he was a kid watching Calvin Grove, but he says it's time for youth to be served. We begin round number one. And Liberatore will try to get that served by getting on to the inside. And there you see what he'll be up against as Grove can run. Liberatore must take advantage of every chance on the inside. For those of you who watch ESPN's Top Rank Boxing every week, this kind of reminds me of a fight we had a couple of weeks ago in Las Vegas, where Roger Mayweather was trying to jumpstart his career, and he fought Ray Lovato, and Grove goes down. It was a trip. And Mayweather got dusted. And, you know, you wonder about a guy like Calvin Grove. I know he's a wily veteran. He's been around a long time. But eventually, the time comes. Well, he'll be tested tonight, too. He will need every bit of his boxing smarts to win this fight. And if there's any lack of desire, it will be shown up here. The Rotori. Has a real chip on his shoulder. He's very upset about the NHL situation. He's a big Ranger fan, and he wants to see them defend their cup. He may take that out on Calvin Grove. Hey, at least fighters aren't on strike. Now, Liberatore is trying to lunge inside and work his way in. What does Calvin Grove have to do? He's got to establish his jab, not let Liberatore get that far inside. As Liberatore starts to come forward, Grove has to put the jab right there and head Liberatore off. That's more or less the line of scrimmage in this fight. Grove's jab. Liberatore gets past that. He'll get big gains on the inside. Grove will give Liberatore every angle possible in this fight. He'll move, throw punches from all different places. You see right there. Try to utilize the ring and then show a different look. Try to tighten up the movement and get some other punches home. Calvin Grove has been in some memorable fights. Fought Azuma Nelson, lost his WBC, lost the WBC title, and Liberatore tries to press the action. That was back in 92, and you remember the fights he had against Jorge Paez in the ring in Mexico, New Mexico. The big lead he had going into the last round, and then he was knocked down three times. A very tough and a bitter way for him to lose that crown. Feeling out process, Grove trying to Feel out Liberatory here at round number one. This one is scheduled for 10 rounds. These are junior lightweights. Back with more of ESPN's top rank boxing. After for Pennsylvania this. with more of ESPN's top rank boxing. Oh, you can get a plant, but we, we gotta...
Get ready for the season with fall car care days at Napa, where you'll find quality. A delay right now. They're fixing the ring ropes, which have broken, and we are joined by a special guest. As you see them cutting the tape away first and trying to get the turnbuckle in place. Regular. Bob Papa, along with Dave Bontempo, Al Bernstein, sick back in Las Vegas. Get well, Al. And we have a very special guest with us, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry Holmes. Larry, welcome. And uh, what do you make of this heavyweight division right now? You're still right in the mix? No, Bob, I don't think I'm in the mix because these guys are what they, I've been saying they are. They're afraid to take a chance. And I don't have any political pull, so therefore I'm left on the outside because these guys are really afraid of what I might do. To, to their boxing career. Are you surprised that it's such a topsy-turvy division right now and nobody can be dominant? No, Dave, because these guys don't dedicate discipline like they should, and this is why boxing is the way it is. These guys is playing the game to make a few dollars, and when they make a few dollars, they forget where they come from. So boxing is in the turmoil right now, and a lot of people are pointing the finger on Don King, but it's not just Don King, it's everybody out there in boxing today, and this is why boxing is not uh, standing up is way should, and this is why I'm here in front of supporting these young guys and hoping, hoping that they can become something outside of their Don Kings and whatnot. Speaking of the young guys and the older guys, how would you handicap coming up uh, George Foreman against Michael Moore? Well, George is going to see a lot of punches coming from a different angle than he used to. And I don't think that's a good fight. The fight should have been Larry Holmes and George Foreman because we're both a senior citizens, I'd say, in the boxing game. And we both probably should get out because the young guys don't want to take the chance to fight me. And George Foreman didn't want That lasted about four minutes or so. They fixed the far ropes, and Calvin Grove and Fred Liberatore are back at it. Early on in the fight, Bob, we wouldn't expect this to have such a big impact. If it was the eighth round of the fight, one man was tired, it would give him a chance to come on strong and find another surge. This happened early, and it's really just like starting over now. Punches in round number one, and Liberatore much, much busier, and Grove landing only nine. Calvin Grove was really trying to get by on his slickness and his fleet of foot ability, but he'll have to pop that jab more if he wants to take control of the fight. Oh, will youth be served? That's the big question. Calvin Grove, 385 professional rounds of boxing coming into this fight. Liberatore, 129. It's very rare to see Calvin Grove out punched by a significant number as he was in round one. As he slips there, not on the ropes, but on something around the ropes. Looks like some water. He's up and he is bothered by that, but he'll be moving back into it. Well, as we said during the heavyweight fight we showed you between Bill Tompkins and Derek Amos, uh, the ring apron is not that wide. From where the ropes come down and where the actual ring ends is not wide. And if you lean into the ropes like Grove did, then you can slip right out. I'm glad that rope strand wasn't uh, in front of us for the Amos fight. Right now, Calvin Grove is really not doing much as far as punches. Well, he's trying to time Liberatore here, and he's electing to fight on the inside. Many fighters do this as they get older, and they want to conserve some energy, so they'll give away the territory and try to win the fight inside, even though it's the other guy's fight. Grove tried to fire a right over the top there. But that's not his game. No, he's not into a slugfest type of a game. There, when he sticks the jab out, that is vintage Calvin Grove. We asked both of these fighters who they think will win the rematch tomorrow night between Colonel Whitaker and Buddy McGirt. Calvin Grove said Whitaker, no problem. And uh, Liberatore gave us McGirt, but I think that might have been more of a regional pick since he's from Bayside, New York. He didn't say it all that convincingly. He said, I want McGirt to win. Both fighters landing there, but once again, slow action. Round number two coming to a conclusion. These are junior lightweights. This bout scheduled for 10 rounds. Grove and Libatory. American invites you to fly away. 
to the pure tranquility of the U.S. Virgin Islands. Our affordable flyaway vacation packages bring you everything that makes these islands so special. We'll need more of that in this fight. Round number three underway as Libertori tries to bull rush Calvin Grove. Grove said he wouldn't mind that this morning and that he'll just pick him apart, but so far he's done very little picking. And the news in between rounds two and three, when Grove went back to his corner, he told his trainer, Bobby Watts, that uh, he twisted his right ankle when he slid out of the ring in round number two, and that's something we'll keep our eye on. He showed the effects of that immediately afterward. And in round number two, Liberatore was accurate and busy. And this one just turning into a scuffle. Tremendous right hand there by Liberatore. Grove has five third round knockouts in his career. Liberatore has three. trying to cover up those shots go over the top but they're effective for Libertor in the sense of driving Grove back and taking him out of his offense Grove try to right hand off the jab but a little slow he's not firing with that jab much he showed some flashes of it in round two but it has to be constant for Calvin Grove He's trying to time Libertori coming in and land as a counter puncher. That is not his game. Yeah, you mentioned you made a good point. He's not snapping out his jab at all. He's pushing it out. This is the kind of fight Libertori likes. A lot of rushing in, a lot of elbows and arms, and swelling though around Libertori's left eye. There might even be a cut there, Dave. And it looks like there is. He's used to paying this kind of a price to get inside. Smaller fighters get cut, get butted on the way in against taller fighters, but Liberatore has always shown he is willing to pay the price for it. He'll chase Grove all around the ring. Break! I'd love to see where that cut is if it's on the eyebrow or the eyelid. the end of round number three. It's been a lot of clutching and grabbing, but right now Fred Libertori is getting the better of Calvin Grove. Break, break, break. Do you know which types of mutual... ...resort in Bushkill, Pennsylvania. And tomorrow ESPN College Football stops at Michigan State. It's Michigan State against number 16, Wisconsin, 12.30 Eastern here on ESPN, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Then at 7.30, Eric Zire in Georgia takes on the Crimson Tide at number 10, Alabama, 7.30 Eastern, tomorrow right here on ESPN. Bob Popo along with Dave Bontempo here on ESPN's Top Rank Boxing. We begin round number four of the scheduled 10-round junior lightweight bout between former IBF featherweight champion Calvin Grove in the white trunks and Fred Liberatore of Bayside, New York in the purple trunks with tassels. And through three rounds, Dave Bontempo, you take a look at it, and so far, Liberatore has made this a little bit of a scuffle, and right now he's been in control. We take a look at your scorecard. You got Liberatore by one. He's doing a good job on the inside, fa facing and fighting his kind of fight. This is exactly what he wants. Surprising for Calvin Grove not to be on the front end in the early stages of a fight. Calvin Grove always builds up big leads against opponents. Here, he's not doing that. He's giving away the inside to Fred Libertori, and Libertori wants it more. What round did you give to Grove? Close second round, I thought he was more effective than the numbers indicated. Very close for Grove. Liberatore's rounds, he's won very big. I have Liberatore throwing a shutout at this point. I thought in that round two he was busier, more accurate, and I thought he won the round. It's be interesting to see how the judges view it. And they worked on that cut right on the left eyebrow of Fred Liberatore in between rounds three and four. He's got Al Gavin working in his corner. 
And again, Liberatore getting inside and Grove giving it to him. Where's the jab of Calvin Grove? You look for the signature. It's been part of him. It's a big part of all his fights. He lands a nice uppercut as he got Liberatore to come in. Oh, and down goes Grove. Liberatore stepped in and put him down. Wrong kind of fight for Calvin Grove. Even in the Dorsey win, he was knocked down seconds before the final bell. And the left hook of Liberatore doing a number here. Well, he tried a big right hand. Grove goes down again, but that is more of a slip and a push. But Grove is still hurt. Liberatore has two career fourth round knockouts. Uh, and the former champion is in some trouble. We talked about the jab not being there for Calvin Grove. And when he didn't get that jab up, he got clocked with a left hook. Jeffrey John Carroll stepped in for some reason there. And Fred Liberatore just keeping the pressure on Calvin Grove. Well, Calvin Grove's reputation is keeping him alive in this fight right now. Somebody else might have been stopped already. You cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. Grove has a little bit of fight left, and he scores with a right hand inside. Might be just enough to steady the ship. a slip. I don't know about that right hand over the top. That was a knockdown. He took a terrific right hand. It might have been partially blocked, but Grove still felt the effects. Let's listen in. His trainer is Bobby Watts. Put something in the bottom of the shoes. Put bottom something on the shoes. Put bottom on the shoes. How you doing? Let me see. Put something on the shoes. 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 Yes. You okay? Look, look. Give me the water. Give me the drink. And the left hook of Liberatore. Watch the left hand of Calvin Grove. It's down, and now he is too. Liberatore with a tremendous shot there. At the end of the round, let's take a closer look. That's a punch. That should go as a knockdown. Calvin Grove got a break there. Yeah, that was a punch that hit him in the back of the ear, and sometimes your equilibrium goes. Now, that will go down as a 10-8 round, but it should be a 10-7 round. Two well, knockdowns. You can make it a 10-7 round. And I did. Calvin Grove is up to start round five, but the former champion who hopes to get another title shot may be coming to the end here at the hands of Fred Liberatore. Point to make there, though, the judges cannot. They have to go with what is ruled by the referee. Now there are the punches through four rounds, and Liberatore just all over Calvin Grove. And it's many factors for Calvin Grove. Technically, the biggest thing, of course, is he's not using his jab as much, fighting Liberatore's fight. But also, Grove is off tonight. He's not there, and Liberatore is on. Well, the judges could give it a 10-7 round and not, not based on a knockdown, right? But just on if they felt he dominated the round that much. Right. If they, but it usually takes two knockdowns for a 10-7 as Grove comes back. And the judges won't do anything not authorized by the referee. Well, as a right hand, Liberatore tries to come back with a left of his own. Seems like Grove has gotten his legs back at least for the time being. In between rounds, you saw he was asking for something on the bottom of the shoe. He felt he was slipping. I think it was more of the punches that were affecting him. Well, we're seeing Fred Liberatore work better on the inside than in many of his fights. He is motivated tonight. He just got into the top ten. It's made him a better fighter. Well, they always say about a fighter getting old in one night, and we might be seeing Calvin Grove age rapidly. Well, he scores with a combination, does Grove, but Liberatore makes a miss with most of those. You're seeing Grove really his last stand in this fight here. He feels he must do something on the inside to take Liberatore away. There was a nice right uppercut. Still, however, the answer for him is outside with the jab, and Calvin Grove is cut. He has a cut on the left eyebrow. Liberatore has a cut in the same spot. Grove getting all tied up again. Seen it with so many fighters near the end of their career, especially guys whose careers were built on sticking and moving, and they try to become sluggers to conserve energy, and that's when they usually suffer that last loss, a knockout loss. 
figure that with their guile and their smarts, they can get by. And in many fights, they can. But against top competition, a fighter really can't. Remember, this is two fighters in the top ten at the same time. A rare matchup with no title at stake. Fred Liberatore punches and jumps back in. Hasn't been a bad round for Grove, but once again, I don't know if it's enough for him to win a round. He doesn't win these fights on the inside. Come to the end of round number five, and a right hand by Grove scores. We'll be back with round six. Block that Calvin Grove needs to stay outside. As we start round number six, Grove was hurt in between rounds. We were able to listen in. He was telling his trainer, Bobby Watts, I'm rusty, man. I'm rusty. He has not fought since May 7th of this year. Uh, and he did come up with a win, but that's not enough. And you see he was more active in that round. But a lot of times when guys are near the end of their career, they feel like, oh, I was just a little off. And Liberatore just continues to plow his way in. And I think it's more than Grove just being rusty. This is the wrong night for him to be off because Liberatore has risen to another level tonight. With Grove not able to take that outside away, Liberatore is ruthless on the inside. Grove does answer, but this is where Liberatore loves to wage this fight. Well, Liberatore just walks right through that combination that Grove scored. Liberatore was concerned earlier that this would turn into a track beat and he would have to really cut off the ring on Calvin Grove, but Grove is right in front of him. Grove has cut himself off. Saw it from Ray Leonard near the end of his career. Stop moving. Meldrick Taylor as he's gotten older and lost some of that zip in the legs. Camacho and a lot of other guys. Guys that are real ring technicians. And some of that is they don't want to make the effort in the gym as well to get up for a lot of these fights. And Liberatore just continues to put his head in the chest of Calvin Grove and just wail away. There is no reason, at least not to have seen two or three rounds from Calvin Grove on the outside, moving laterally up on his toes. And even when Grove has landed with some right hands, like right there in a combination with a left back, it does not even back up Liberatore. Well, if Calvin Grove does manage to win tonight, it will strictly be on heart, not on technique. Well, anyone who's ever watched Calvin fight before wouldn't recognize him right now the way he's just standing in the middle and slugging. He usually touches the ball, goes from ring post to ring post, and is a good ring general, but not tonight. Well, he did score with an uppercut. This might have been his most effective round, though. Six seconds to go in round number six. And we take you to the corner of Fred Liberatore. Do you want this fight? You're gonna start listening over here. Listen now, listen up. Use your jab. Okay. When you get inside, move your head, work the body, then go to the head. You can start at the head and go to the body. With him, okay. He's leaning in with you. Okay. You could use your left left hand underneath and your right hand underneath. Okay, buddy. Okay. You gotta get. Come on, please. Please, Phil. Keep going. Keep working, man. Cam, keep fighting. Come back now, buddy. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. Don't think about that. Over the top. Don't even think about that. You ain't shape. You ain't shape. Let's go. Well, you hear Calvin Grove saying, I'm rusty, I'm rusty. And Bobby Watts telling him, don't think about that. You're in shape as we start round seven. Break, Lando. Come on, get out. What we might be seeing now from Calvin Grove, acknowledging the rust and pretty much just trying to do with whatever is there for him tonight, trying to do it on the inside, even though it's not his best way. 
Take a look at the punches in round number six and drove through more and landed more. That's probably why we both gave him round six. And a close round indeed. He's had no shortage, no shortage of guts by Calvin Grove. No, not at all. He's had some success with those uppercuts on the inside. As you see Libertori leaning in and winging his punches from the side, that uppercut is there. And now Grove is teeing off, trying for a bomb in the uppercut. He's lining it up. Well, I don't think Libertori was all that hurt. And referee John Carroll made a motion like he was going to step in. And then he let Grove fire away. Well, whenever an uppercut snaps a head back, referees jump right in. Well, Liberatore's corner cautioned him at the end of the last round. Listen, you want to win this thing? Listen. He's gotten away from his fight plan a little bit. Well, they never expected he would be outpunched on the inside by Grove here. And there is some subtle angular movement by Grove on the inside, turning a little bit, showing a little bit more for Libertori to shoot up. Well, they both score with right hands there. Now, Grove told us, you know, he's been fighting professionally for 12 years. He's seen every style, and this style doesn't phase him, and he felt he could show some things to Libertori, but as he waited until too late. And usually, an outside boxer might try to win a couple rounds on the inside early to establish a force in there, but it does not become a staple. See, there's Calvin Grove bouncing around, giving Liberatory different angles. Liberatory lunging with those punches. Let's see how Grove will try to counter that. The right hand behind the jab. When Grove gets his left hand active, he can step in and try to get some power with his right hand. And Liberatory goes down. Well, they're counting it a knockdown. It looked more like a oh, punch. that was a tangle. That's a tough call on Fred Liberatore. And that is a very bad call at this juncture. Well, just because they rule it a knockdown, it doesn't mean the judges have to score it that. But they usually do. Almost uniformly, you can almost count on them doing that. Well, he comes to the end of round seven. Fred Liberatore goes down, and he's got to work for... Referee John Carroll. Yeah, yeah like you're missing right, a good man, fight. You gotta start moving your hands. You're walking right to this guy. Okay? You keep telling me okay. You, I keep waiting for you to do it. You gotta work behind, work behind your jab, Fred. Hey, throw it here. Throw it here. Then let your right hand go. You let this guy take the play away from you, Fred. Here's how it looks. The lunge by Liberatore. They tangle up, and you see the knee knocks him down. That's a terrible call. How can a fighter lose a point in a situation like that? Yeah, the fight might turn on this. i tell you what. He turns him over. His knee. There was a right hand being launched at the same time, but that's not the right call. Uh, if I'm scoring, and I thought Grove might have been a little bit better than that. Let's listen some more to the Okay? Look at me. You want this fight? It's yours. It's yours. Would you close? Hit him with it. I'll tell you what, though, Dave. I, I thought Grove won that round, and I make it a 10-9 round. I don't give him a 10-8 for that. I, I don't give him a 10-8 either, but I'll bet the judges do make it a 10-8 once the knockdown is ruled. That's a key swing in this fight. Take a look at the punches in round number seven. And Grove once again busier and more accurate. And he was about a point better, and he probably gets a bonus point now in his comeback. Also, the knockdown that Libertori scored earlier was not called. So that's two points that Libertori has lost. Well, Grove is starting to put on the gas pedal here. As we take a look at Dave's scorecard, you have Libertori up by three. I have him up by four. Second round was close, but right now Calvin Grove is starting to come on a little bit, Dave. And given that bonus point he probably just received, now there might be time for him in this fight. Remember, this is a 10-round fight, and Grove gets hammered. And he goes down to a knee. And referee John Carroll is scoring at a knockdown. Grove says he was pushed down. And that was close. He might be right. Boy, for both fighters to react the way they have, I mean, you know they weren't really hurt. Well, if 
the slip down equals a knockdown and he needs death and injustice will be served. The Libertori scores with a left and another left. Grove comes back. Libertori. Bomb for bomb we go. Libertori get tied through. We needed to say nothing then. This is scintillating by itself. And Grove and Libertori come together again. Just two guys giving everything. And things were really going badly for Calvin Grove tonight. And to his credit, he's come back. Oh, and he scores with a right hand. But Libertori doesn't back up. What a round. The smaller guys always give you more for your money. Oh, and Groves' arm got caught in the rope. Well, maybe he's in a little bit more trouble than we think. Grove is hurt and tired. Libertori just keeps on punching. Groves got to hold on here. Wow, what a round eight. Fred Liberatore and a former champion, Calvin Grove. Mark this one down when they start giving out the awards. Unbelievable. Is the gray in Looks more like a push down than a knockdown. So Liberatore gets a break after losing some earlier points because of bad calls. We start round nine. Both fighters receiving a large ovation. In round number eight, it was tremendous. Terrific round, and Calvin Grove on a night when it has not been going well for him, digs down, stands inside, and really, they've both been slugging like championship. We take a look at the punches in round eight. Liberatore more than double, and he landed more than double. This reminds us, those who watch regularly, last week in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Kenny Blackstone and John Hallinan fought Two rounds of unbelievable boxing, and that round eight was just like it. And you never know when it's going to break out like that. It had been a one-sided fight, and then all of a sudden, Grove turned it on, and Liberatore answered, too. Calvin Grove was... Hurt in that last round, a questionable knockdown. But really, Liberatore pounded him all over the ring. Except for one good counter right, mostly Liberatore. It was his round to begin with, and he's following up here. Head hunting, body hunting, willing to take a shot to try to get Calvin Grove out of there. And Grove answers back with a left, but it doesn't back up Liberatore. See Calvin Grove just trying to load up. Well, the veteran skills, he knows the jab hasn't been there for him tonight. The ring movement hasn't been there. He's trying to win the unlikely way on the inside. He's found a pretty good opponent, however, in Libertor. For Calvin Grove, 393 rounds as a pro, and he's never had a knockout pass round seven. of Calvin, the chance of Freddy. They're both putting on some performance, although it has slowed a bit here in round nine. Well, they have to gather their steam for another assault here. <laughs> According to my card, though, Grove will need a knockout in round 10 to win it. The same way I see it as well, and the knockdowns Liberatore has gotten. The judges may see it that way, too. Manager Stan Hoffman, to our right, is yelling out encouragement to Fred Liberatore. He represents Liberatore. He used to represent Calvin Grove when Calvin Grove won the title. We come to the end of round nine, the tenth and final round, coming up next. He needs Calvin to step on the pedal. And don't forget, coming up after a top-ranked boxing here on ESPN, fasten your seatbelts for Speed Week.
with Sports Center to follow after that. The tenth and final round, Fred Liberatore and Calvin Grove. These are junior lightweights. And the punches through nine rounds. Liberatore with 603 thrown, 311 landed. That's impressive. It has been his style of fight from the beginning. He has capitalized. But when you look at the excitement that's been generated in this fight, you see why boxing needs more matchups of guys in the top ten fighting each other. They've all reached a certain skill level. Put them together with no titles at stake. Showcase the game. You have 8683. I have an 8783. A knockout needed by Grove in any case. Good shot to the body by Liberatore. And as this final round unfolds and this fight unfolds, you wonder, is this the end for Calvin Grove? Well, if it is, what a way to go out with a ton of heart. Freddie Liberatore, the type of fighter who will bring it out of you. Or will Grove point to the ring rust that he said he felt and say he could be better? Trying to load up with the right. But you wonder, even if he did not feel rusty, the way Liberatore is tonight, this fight would have been on the inside regardless. Well, Fred Liberatore out of Bayside, New York, has pressed the action to the former world champion all night long. It's amazing for Liberatore. He's taken more strides in his last two fights than he did in the last few years. Grove with a glancing left, trying an uppercut, but it's Liberatore with a workmanlike approach. Once again, it's Liberatore who just comes forward. No jab by Grove, just accident front by Liberatore. Calvin Grove trying to get an uppercut, trying to make Liberatore walk into it. And there's the uppercut, but it doesn't do much. We've seen flashes of the old Calvin Grove, but now it's more of the slugger. He's not a come-from-behind fighter. He's given 12 good years to professional boxing, but right now it's Fred Liberatore who has pushed him maybe to the end. There's the bell to end it. What a fight. Very good fight. Bobby Watts holds up 32-year-old Calvin Grove. There's Fred Liberatore, 27 years of age. He thinks he's a winner. Dave, I know you do. Certainly on the inside, it was his effort tonight. He was delighted, I'm sure, that Calvin Grove chose to fight on the inside. The fans were treated to an excellent slugfest in the last half of the fight. And these guys left nothing on the table. That yeah, was a good, clean fight. Some wild action, especially in round seven. And you have to give Calvin Grove a lot of credit when things were going against him. He dug in and tried to win in an unlikely fashion. He decided to slow because that was the only thing that might work for him tonight. The only thing in this fight that you might be able to question, there were two questionable knockdowns ruled by referee John Carroll. Uh, we disagree with both of them. Each fighter was recorded with one, so it kind of evened out. It probably evened out as far as that's concerned, and a uh, very surprising numerical victory for Liberatore. You don't see Calvin Grove out punched by a margin like that ever, especially with his jab, which is automatic to pile up points. So Calvin Grove of 32 years of age and Fred Liberatore, they really went at it for 10 rounds. Now here with the decision, our ring announcer, Ed Darian. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Res Fernwood Resort and Country Club here in Bushkill, Pennsylvania, we have a split decision. And we've got the scoring right here. Judge Jack Castellani scores 94-92 Grove. Judge Bill Flasser, he scores it 95-93 Liberatori. And Judge Richard Strange, he has it 94-93 for the winner by split decision.
Freddy, the Pitbull Liberatore. Tough to believe it was a split decision. At least the right verdict was recorded. The margin wasn't right. Fred Liberatore, the winner. That wraps it up. He stops Calvin Grove for our entire crew. I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for joining us on ESPN's Top Ranked Boxing. Get well soon, Al. Speed Week is next here on ESPN.